everyone, and welcome to the Nerdy Quail. Today we're going to be playing Pathfinder Kingmaker. It's a RPG in the vein of the Baldur's Gate series, and plays very similarly as well. It's based on the Pathfinder RPG, and we are just going to get right down to it. So we're going to start a new game. I'm going to do the main story, and we are going to create a character. All right, we've chosen our character portrait, and we're gonna make him, let's see here, what do we have? Half elf, half lane, that's more, let's stick with human. All right, we'll make him right-handed. And we got that done. And get a key, let's see what class we wanna do. These look like these are the prestige classes from the Pathfinder game. Let's see what other options we have. Wizard, Sorcerer, Slayer. I actually think we're going to just stick with a fighter, actually. And we're going to do a two-handed fighter. Now we're going to allocate our ability points. Alright, I'm going to give the racial bonus to strength, which gives us an 18 and strength, and then we have 16 in dexterity and 14 in constitution. Next, we're going to check out the skills. So what we're going to do, we're going to give him at least one in athletics, uh, then we're going to do one in mobility, and they're going to give him one in world knowledge. We are going to look at weapon focus. And we are going to see great sword. Right, I'm going to give him combat reflexes. That way he can make a, um, additional attacks of opportunity. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get armor fo or not armor focus, but we're going to get power attack actually. Uh, we'll just give them a random, uh, birthday, that's good. We cannot be defeated. I didn't even break a sweat. Alright, sound pragmatic. Uh, alignment will be, uh, yeah, chaotic neutral. Anything goes for him, whatever he wants. Alright, and a name, we'll name him... All right, we'll name him Devlin. I'll go ahead. Okay, and here we go. Here's our character sheet. Special abilities we have is fighting defensively and coup de gras. That would be nice. And we'll complete it. Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori sword lord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. Where are they? This is taking forever! They didn't even say what this was for, just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Aldori anyway, rich folk? If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevoy. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Hush! Quiet! They're coming. Greetings, everyone. I am Swordlord Jamandi Aldori, 
And this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restal. Welcome to my mansion. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless, exactly what Restov needs. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevois' border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the Stolen Lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? All right, so now this brings us to our first choice. Let's see here. There's a couple of conversation choices we can do. And... Yes, the first option fits us perfectly. There's a whole team of us. Who exactly will receive the Baron's title? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. What rewards can we expect exactly? And what reward would you seek beyond a noble title and your own lands? We'll absorb the costs of preparing and equipping your expeditions. Once you return victorious, Restor will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. Words, words, words. Significant, financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. Of course, there will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Rostov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Now you're talking. And we're going to choose the final option. It's clear as day. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage, the unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So. Shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? I'm Devlin. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Actually, I also wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown, or whatever it is Baron's wear. 
It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This... This is the person I'll write my book about. Wait, a book? Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or gods forbid, Tartuccio? No way. Not a bad plan. It's subtle then. I'll accomplish the feats, and you'll write them down. Deal. All right. I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. So what's interesting is that the uh, quest log is actually written as um, Lindsay's notes and book. So the first step on the road to glory. My quill takes its first step in the ink pot and scripts, or rather scribbles, the first lines of the book about travels, adventures, and victories that lie ahead. The book that will extol both the hero, its hero and me, the, its author. And everyone is pretty much not willing to talk. So we'll just go ahead. Help! Help! What's going on? The mansion's under attack. We need to help. Some villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers or we'll all be cut down one by one. Enemy hey. approaching. And as she leaves, an assassin enters the room. All right, we're going to just start off by. We'll just this start off by do doing it. attack. And that's a lovely hit. I need to have a dagger. Let's see. I have scale armor, which is five AC, and that is four AC. Yeah, we'll keep the scale mail on for now. Look, they're running, get them. And what should I do with this one? We'll finish him we later. He won't get away. Looks like they have Tartuccio. Yep, they do. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try charging one of them. And we'll have Lindsay. I can't control Lindsay yet. All right. Yeah, we took out one. You're that just takes out the other. A bit longer, and I'd have been. Whew, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound, and unscathed, ready to lead you to victory. Lady Jamandi's holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. Speaking of dummies. Take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. 
Time's not waiting. All right, we're gonna loot everyone. All right, let's see. So Devlin, of course, is chaotic neutral, but he's also a little wary of Tartuccio, so he's probably not going to be wearing this ring. Fortunately, I can't give it to him either. All right, and we're not going to put that on for now. Let's see if I can snag anything good off anyone. No. All right, we'll continue. Actually, we have a... All right, uh, now that I can look at my weapon set, I do have a great sword. All right, I do have a bonus at using the great sword. So we'll use that for now. That is not far. Assassin, Assassin Bowman. They dare to attack me! Serves you right! And we'll have Tatuchu attack him. <laughs> Alright. The extra attack opportunities are quite helping so far. It should be. All right, there's blood leading to this door here. Of course, Devlin's a little curious, so he's gonna go double check that. Looks like the orc that was in there died. Uh, Lindsay, oh no, is everyone dead? Talk to Uchio. Pathetic. They couldn't even defend themselves, but they thought they could conquer the stolen lands. Well, that just means loot for us. More loot there. Go into a room across the hall. There's a cat alive, but looks like there's some things stored here and there. Collect everything. All right, party suffers from medium encumbrance. Uh, I think what we'll do is start allocating some uh, uh, healing potions out. We're gonna start with a charge. This spell doesn't work like that. Yeah. Looks like I this spell doesn't work can't like that. charge anyone. So we're a just gonna have him risk. rush there. Lindsay attack. You just that one and Tatuchu attack the other. Oh, it's you. Stay up from under my feet or I'll strike you down. Blood for Gorum! And there she goes. Barbarians. I think that's exactly how heroes should be. What, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria saved me from such heroes. And any good loot? Uh, health potion. And I don't think we can go through this heavy grate. Nope. So we're going to continue following her this direction. There they are, the assassins, one of the guards said. This is your last chance. Drop your weapons and you'll spare your lives, said another guard. 
So generous. I'm afraid I can't offer you the same courtesy. Hey, you ugly mug. Get them. A giant ghost frost giant looking thing just came in and killed all three guards. Uh, it was a frost giant. Alright, let's see. This gentleman had that, and nothing else good to loot. Guards, however. Spear. We'll take everything that they had, and we can't go through this rubble here. So we're going to have to start going around. So there's some wooden beams in our way, so we're gonna. It's gonna take us a dexterity check. Anything else? And. Lindsay's dexterity check was successful. Looks like there's a couple of no bowmen that haven't noticed us yet. Can you make an hey. epic pose? I need inspiration. And uh, we'll set everyone to attack. And I know what to do. Such lovely attack of opportunities. Okay, steal those and we'll keep everything else there. Alright, we have the option of breaking down the armory door to steal some weapons. But, eh, Devlin doesn't feel like it. Applause, please. That is not far. I think they're having us uh, go into the armory anyway, so... We'll grab everything. There's the key that we needed. What have we here? This chest is full of gold. I guess it's for the guard salaries, all things considered. Well, those freeloaders don't seem to have been working too hard. What? No, we're heroes, not thieves. Who said we were stealing it? We'll just take the gold for safety so the assassins don't get it. And then, we can heroically return it to Jamandi when this is all over. Yeah, he's, uh, Devlin's not terribly happy with this. Stealing from a sword lord in her own mansion, she would have our heads. How would she know it was us and not the assassins? Unless someone planned on telling her. Don't drag me into this. You do what you want, but I'm not taking a single coin. Alright, we got the key that we needed. Let's see if we can use anything that we just picked up. Alright, the banded male does more armor, but max dexterity is one. The breastplate, however, I think we'll swap to the breastplate. Slightly better armor than the scale mail, with the same armor check penalty and max de uh, max dexterity. And I think we're good on everything else. We are medium encumbered though, so let's see if we can drop some more things. Oh, familiar faces. I hope you're not so frightened as to swing at every shadow. It's me, Jathol. I don't recommend advancing down the hallway, assuming you value your life, of course. There were a few people with me, and you can see what happened to them. 
And just how did they all end up dead while you don't seem to have a scratch? I'll answer but briefly and just once. Further scares and explanations will wait until we aren't being hunted by a group of assassins. Deal? All right. I'm undead. These traps are deadly to the living, but they're harmless to me. What do you mean, undead? Really? Like, zombies or skeletons or...? As I said, further explanations will wait until later. All you need to know right now is that we're on the same side, and we have to fight off a small army of hired assassins. Let's get to it. All right, we now have an additional person. As it should be. Okay, we're gonna go oh, check curious. in there, but there is a trap along the hallway. Get the gold coins and the card beads. All according to plan. Okay, we're gonna disarm the trap. Applause, please. Okay, we're I good. See something. And there's another one. Anything else? Would you look at that? And a third. Get that one. Applause, please. And we're gonna open the door. There's a chest, we'll snag that. Uh, there's chain mail and a flouch shard. Or a flouch shard. What do we got? I'll take those. Okay, two scroll. Scroll bless and scroll shield faith. Collect those. What are you dealing for? I'm telling you, Jamondi's cash has to be here somewhere. Well, hurry up before someone. Stop! Our someone's coming. Is certain. The two assassins. This the devil will attack them. Yes, the we'll attack the other. see here it's in here and then our leader charged forwards uh, hey wait for me and our friend the dwarf is just laying down on the ground let's try this way wretched thing out of my way Leave this one to me. Just die already. Any last wishes? There's a... Okay. Ah, See? Everything is so much fun with a little fire. What a night, huh? I thought I was all alone. It's good you're here. A bit boring, chasing fool assassins without anyone watching the show. It's not fun at all. Many people have died for nothing. <sighs> Sound like a Kaleshite, am I right? Of course. I'm from Kadira. But tales of hot deserts and shady oases can wait until the fighting's finished. But if you'd like to share a dinner and pleasant conversation, just say the word. I like making new friends. All right, there are assassins in the prowl. We have to go. I don't know where you're headed, but I'll be at the entrance to the main hall. I think I saw some guards there. Join me there, if you wish. I am prepared. All right. And we have Harem on the floor. Grotus, I can sense your silhouette hovering over me. It won't be much longer. Soon we shall meet 
Oh Lord of Oblivion. We're gonna be a little pragmatic and just pour a healing potion that one of the dwarf has into his mouth. Uh, too late. Forgive me. Oblivion is calling. And that didn't work. We're gonna be slightly diplomatic. Well, aren't you being a, pre a bit premature? Look at yourself. You barely got a scratch. You're wrong. Who would know better than I the severity of my own wounds? I can feel the last drops of vital force leaving me. Now we're going to intimidate. When it's Tartuccio. Quit the act. Stand and fight. I'll really send you to your final rest. How rude. Speaking to a dying man that way. Look. I can't even move. Yeah. It, uh... It seems I will live. I suppose I must postpone meeting my god. Not for long, I'm sure. But while we remain in this transient world, Arim is at your service. Alright. the dwarf, and we'll see if, uh... Anything useful here. A sort of leather might be useful. State your desire. Okay, we'll continue checking this area out. Nice little fountain there. Couple of guards. You, run and get an axe. You, bring more water. You, stay here and hold our defense. Those assassins are still around here somewhere. Aha! Some of our guests survived. Good. You need to get to the banquet hall and help Lady Jamandi. We'll uh, ask him, do you need no, help we'll out the fire? I've got my best people here, those who still live. It doesn't seem right. What if some of the guards are wounded? We need to help them. Well, it's like, I'll go immediately. Fire doesn't frighten me, thanks to hell's blood running in my veins. I'll go ahead and wait for you on the other side. Catch up. May Abadar keep you safe. In due time. And so our adventure started, earlier and much more tragic than we expected. The whole team who'd gathered in the hall yesterday had been reduced but to a handful of brave souls, led by Devlin, and not at all by that scoundrel Tartuccio. No matter what he might have imagined of himself, Jamandi Aldori was waiting for us, but to get to her we had to march to the fire. Literally. As we approached the burning building, we... Uh, drenched ourselves with buckets of water. Prudence is the key to victory. Before moving through the fire, we thoroughly wet our clothes and hair, and after that, we covered our noses and mouths before we rushed inside. It was a good thing we hadn't wasted any time. After entering the building and taking just a few steps forward, the walls behind us slanted and crashed down with a terrible crackling sound, blocking the way. While we may not have planned on going back, if we come in a little later, the flaming logs and red-hot bricks would have fallen right on our heads. Regardless, we were left with only one way to go. The hot air burned our lungs and our eyes watered from the smoke, but Devlin led us stubbornly through the flames while Tartuccio did nothing at all. We made it to the hallway leading to the banquet hall, when we heard someone calling for us. It was Valerie, one of the guards I had chatted with a bit in the banquet hall. Even then, in that calm setting, I'd been stunned by her beauty. But now, amid the smoke and flame, she looked like the celestial avenger, an armored deity, menacing but beautiful and merciful, descending from the higher spheres to help us poor mortals. mortals. She held a burned, barely living guard in her arms. There are two more, she shouted as she passed by us. They are wounded. Help me pull them out. Tartuccio grumbled about something about how Jamandi was waiting for us. Meanwhile, Devlin rushed to save the guards from the fire. And that was a successful athletics check. Saving the poor fellows didn't take long. Together, we lifted them up and carried them away from the fire. 
Only then did Valerie pause to catch her breath and wipe the sweat from her face. Thank you. That was truly noble of you, she said. And now let us rush to Lady Aldori's aid. Ensuring the guards we rescued were relatively safe, we made our way down to the hall where the battle was already in full swing. Alright, one of our people is fatigued, and that is Valerie. And we're just going to go ahead and move through the door here. Things left. Uh, we're going to take the healing potions. And the money. Reinforcements are on already on their way. Say your prayers, scum. The help has arrived quickly. We need to save Lady Jamonde. Said Kalisi. Or Kaisi, actually. Alright, we're gonna rush in and start taking out these people. Oh, we got a lot of assassins here. And three rift channelers. So we're gonna have you right. Our range people take out them. We're gonna have her, the uh, vampress, take out one of the oh, worst channelers. Harm's gonna assist. And Valerie's gonna start taking on the leader. I forgot to set these. What we'll do is we're gonna use one of the uh, healing potions. Okay, belt. Healing potion. Okay, it looks like he got hit with fear. Let's try that again. There we go. Look at me, Gorum! No. Take everything that we need. Some flasks. Talk to Amory a bit. I even departed. We've already won our first battle. Seems like a good omen, right? We're going to talk to Jumandi Aldori. Thank you for your valor and bravery. The enemy was strong, but you were stronger. And that means I made the right choice. Just as I thought, there were worthy leaders among you. I'm especially grateful to them for the courage and common sense they showed while defending the mansion. But this attack means we have even less time than I thought. Someone already knows of our plans and is acting against us. You'll begin your expedition immediately. Lady Aldori, please, I know who arranged this attack. The vile king of Pitax, Iroveti. What's more, I know who among us works for him. Hey, you! Show everyone the ring you're wearing. You think I wouldn't recognize Hiroveti's seal? That's why he wasn't killed. The bandits recognized him as one of their own by this signet ring. And since we're not wearing a ring, I will choose show your hands. What ring? What are you talking about? Lady Aldori, I saw it with my own eyes. The ring must be in his pocket. Search him and I'm sure... Enough, Tartuccio. I'm still the one giving orders here. We won't be searching anyone. There's definitely a spy among us. But who? All I have is one word against another. I'm afraid you're both under suspicion. They both came to your aid, Lady Germandi. 
But a liar's cunning knows no bounds. I've never met these two or their companions. For all I know, they're all conspiring spies. How could you say that? We fought together. We literally went through fire together. And then you vanished into thin air. After you promised you'd wait. My words might be rash. I bet my life despise anyone but this man. I saw how he dealt with those creeps with my own eyes. A true warrior, I'd go with him through hell and high water. This purple crook on the other hand... <laughs> he's got the eyes of a spy! And the mug of a spy! Well, we got the barbarian with us. Lady Eldori, don't listen to this thick-headed barbarian. She doesn't know what she's talking about. During the attack, our leader showed his true colors. He forced us to break into the armory and rob it. We're going to choose the chaotic neutral response. We were in the middle of a battle and needed weapons. There was no time to run and ask permission. Considering the circumstances, that was more than reasonable. Is it not insane to be faced with death and stop to question whether you may be breaking some law or rule? Our leader acted wisely. We have the dwarf with us. There is a difference between initiative taken in battle and blatant arrogation. How can someone who disregards authorities be a leader himself? What about that trick he pulled right before we came in here? He knew very well you were fighting the enemy, but instead of rushing to help you, he dallied as long as he could, dropping everything to save people from the fire, even though the guards were handling things just fine. He was obviously hoping to show up too late and find you already dead. We're going to choose the neutral evil response, or neutral good response, actually. People were dying right in front of me. How could I just walk by? Really, Cartuccio? You're seriously trying to blame someone for saving people from a fire? May Shellen spare me from ever having to make such a choice, but he behaved decently as a true leader. A true leader is someone who has their priorities straight, not someone who would put a valuable ally's life in danger for the sake of some servant. Enough squabbling. I'm still not sure which of you I can trust. However, the risk of entrusting the whole affair to a spy is too great. Here's what we'll do. Two teams will head out. That way, I'll know at least one group can be counted on to serve my interests in the stolen lands. Lady Aldori, most of those who were to set off for the stolen lands have been killed. Those who yet live will require help. Please allow me to join the expedition. I'm sad to lose such a talented warrior. But you're right, Valerie. They have greater need of you right now. Go, and may Abadar keep you. Which of the two teams would you prefer to accompany? If Tartuccio allows, I would join his team. Forgive me, but I don't appreciate your willfulness. And I like our leader. What wisdom lies in minding orders, laws, and rules in the face of oblivion, knowing not whether you'll be alive tomorrow? I will go with his team. Our leader is good in battle, but I don't like all the spiritual agonizing. I prefer those who can act without wasting time helping every little pipsqueak. Those like Tartuccio. Ugh, Tartuccio's going to take the credit for himself and be done with it. Shellen, spare me from such allies. I'm going with you. You're a hero worthy of my quill. As for me, I know neither of these two. At least, not well enough. And I have no wish to become an unwitting pawn to an unworthy leader. If Lady Jamandi allows, I'll remain in Restoff and help mend the wounds this attack has inflicted. But who knows? The road may bring me to the Stolen Lands, but not yet. I don't even need to think. I'm coming with this man. As for you, Purple Toad, just wait until we meet along the way. I'll be sure to hang your rotten spy guts from the trees. All right, we have two teams. 
To avoid unnecessary conflict on the road, you'll each take a different route to the Stolen Lands. Tartuccio's team will go through Nevakta's Crossing. The Garrison Commandant will provide him all the help he needs. You will take your team to Oleg Leviton's trading post. He's been complaining about the Stag Lord's bandits for a while now. There, you'll be provided with all the necessary travel supplies. We also receive some camping supplies, some rations, and a signed scroll of Raise the Dead. I'd like to believe you, but I know all too well how convincing traitors and spies can be. If you're truly innocent, I hope you can forgive me this precaution. While you're away, Keston will investigate the night's events and learn who in Restov is working for Patox. But you should know that it isn't just Patox we need to worry about. The Royal House of Sertova may also interfere in our plans. I've managed to keep this affair a secret from them so far, but that can't last long. By my estimations, you have no more than three months. After that, any feats you accomplish will be pointless. And now, farewell. This battle was but the first ordeal along your path, and you overcame it as true champions of Restov. May the obstacles that follow also fall to your feet. Fear nothing, my friends, and return victorious. Thanks for watching, everyone. In the next episode, we'll see the party making their way to the Stolen Lands and starting their adventure proper. Tune in next time. Make sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends.